Hello and welcome to Angles and Ass, where we learn things maths and science. In today's video, we are looking at percentages and fractions and how to convert them from one into the other format. But before we get into that, we have to go into some facts. So the first fact that we need to keep in mind is that percentages are actually fractions. In fact, you can even see a bit of a clue in its symbol where the percent sign looks very similar to a fraction which has a numerator and a denominator, which also in turns looks very similar to a division symbol. But what makes percentages unique is that percent, it actually translates to out of 100. So they're essentially fractions of 100. We're gonna use this fact to actually do some converting. So we're just gonna do a very basic example. This one here, we're going to try and convert two fifths into percentages. Now, the trick that we can use here is that if the denominator, in this case five, is easily multiplied up to 100, then let's use that trick. We're gonna use the idea of equivalent fractions, where if I scale the bottom and the top of the fraction by the same amount, it's still the same identity, it's still the same value as before. For example, one over two is exactly the same answer as two out of four. If I can scale two fifths such that the denominator becomes 100, I can easily now talk about it in terms of percentages. So here we go. Five can easily be scaled up to 100 by multiplying it by 20. Five times 20 gives me 100. If I do the same top and bottom, multiplying by 20, I can also get uh, an equivalent fraction. So here we go. Two times 20 gives me 40. So two fifths as a percentage is 40 percent. Now this trick will work for all cases where the denominator can be converted up to 100. Another way of looking at it is that if the denominator is one of the factors of 100, one or a two or a four, a five, 10, 20 or 25, 50, or of course 100, these are all factors of 100. So if the denominator that you're looking at has any of those, then they then you know straight away that they can easily be multiplied up. But some cases, they're not so easy where they are not one of those um, factors of 100. So what do we do then? We've got a different trick. Let me get into that next. So if we look at the example of 5 thirds, we can't use the trick as we've done just before. And that's because the denominator, in this case 3, there's nothing I can multiply 3 with to turn that into 100. I need to use something else. So what we're gonna try here is that if I multiply this by 100 over one, I can then convert this and then I'm gonna work from there. So this is the trick. You multiply your fraction with 100 over one. I like to attach the percentage sign now. So I'm just gonna stick it there. And uh, now it's just a process of multiplying the numerators. So five times 100 gives me 500 on top and three times one on the bottom produces three and I'm gonna carry across that percentage symbol. From here to get to my answer, I need to convert this fraction into a decimal. And I'm going to do that by using the fact that a fraction is also a division symbol. So it's effectively 500 divided by three. If I can do that division, I'm gonna do it by hand, but if I can do that division, I can convert this into a decimal answer of percent, which is the usual kind that we see percentages presented to us. So how many times can I fit three into 500? So three fits into five, fits in there once with two remaining. So I fit in there one, my two remainder goes onto the shoulder of the next digit. Now I look at how many times does three fit into 20? Well, in that case, three times six is 18. 18 is probably the biggest we can get within 20. So three lots of six fits in there with some remainder. That remainder is two. I can see a pattern here. So I'm gonna carry that two to the next digit. So here we now, how many times does three fit into 20? So again, it's gonna be six times with two remainder. So we're gonna get an answer that's gonna have six, 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 six recurring. My answer to the problem above, let me just set this working here aside. I'm just gonna move that over there. My answer is going to be 166.6 recurring percent as the final answer. I'm gonna show you one more trick when you have a mixed number. So in this case, if I have a mixed number, I've got some options to me. One of them is I could absorb the number out front and bring it into the numerator. So three lots of five, that's 15. 
and add that to the top. That gives me 19, so 19 over five. And then I can do the process that I've learned before, or I can leave it up front and just treat the three as a hundred percent. So that'd be 300% because three holes plus that four fifths. Now for this trick to work, I might do the equivalent fraction strategy because the denominator here is easily multiplied up to 100. So if I times that by 20 times the top by 20, I will get 80 this time out of 100. So I've effectively got 300% plus 80%. So I'm going to have a total 380% is the final answer. Let's look at another example here. I've got two and four thirds. I've deliberately made it so that I can't use the equivalent fraction method. Here, what I can do, again, treat the number two. I can treat that as 200% because it's two holes, 200% plus my four thirds. And for my four thirds, because it doesn't have a denominator that can be converted, I'm gonna do the 100 over one trick, 200% plus 400 over three, and I'm going to do short division. So how many times does three fit into 400? So three fits into four, it fits in there once with one remainder. So I now carry that across. So three fits into 10, three times three is nine. So it fits in there three times with again, one remainder. So I'm starting to see the pattern once more. It appears that the answer is going to be 133.3 recurring percentage. My next row of working here is gonna be 200% plus 133.3 recurring percent, which gives a total of 333.3 recurring percent. All right, so now we're gonna move on to trying to convert the other way, to convert 45% uh, into a fraction. It's actually very simple. If we use the definition of percentage, so if I say 45%, I'm saying 45 out of 100, I'm just gonna use that. And technically, I have converted it into a fraction. But I'm going to give you a piece of advice here is that almost always it is preferable to simplify your fractions before you call it done. So I'm looking at the numerator and the denominator and they both end with a five and a zero. That gives me a clue that they can both be divisible by five. So divide the top and divide the bottom by five. 45 divided by five is nine. 100 divided by five is 20. Nine and 20 don't share any other factors in common. So nine has one, three and nine as its factors and 20 has none of those besides one. So that is as simplified as it can be. And here I would call it done. Thanks for watching. I hope that you found the video useful and you enjoyed the video. If you want to have a try at some of these practice problems at home, I've got some here in the background for you to try. You're welcome to drop your answers in a comment down below. And I guess the first few of them that I find that are correct, I'll give them a little heart symbol if you got them correct so that you can all check your answers against theirs. And um, I'll see you in the next video.